I'm all the way from Prime Watch. <laughs> Right, okay, just uh, quickly. Guys, how many of us have had people, how many of you have had people say to you, you know what, when you tell them you can earn a thousand pound a month, they're like, oh yeah, I'd do anything for a thousand pound a month. Have you had people like that? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely anything for an extra thousand pound a month. Oh, football's on, I can't make it. <laughs> <laughs> just, just be really careful who you work with. Um, I'm going to do my training in a minute, but I just want to say a couple of quick things, just a bit of, um, just things that I've learned, and one of the things I've learned is be careful of your time stealers because we can all give it a good talk. And I think sometimes, I'll take my hat off to you guys for turning up today, um, because sometimes you, you know, people will talk a good talk. And one of the lessons I've learned, which helped me move my business on, or helped me move my business faster, was people can talk the talk, but you can judge people on action. So, you, you know, judge people on the figures, judge people on the turnover. We can all give it a good talk. So, you know, somebody says, I want to earn 10, 20 grand a month is brilliant, but when football's on, they can't even get here. So, you know, just be careful who you're spending your time with, because you know what, you only need five good people. But you could end up spending a lot of time, and the reason I'm saying this is because I've experienced it myself, and I've spent a lot of time with people who promise the good, the, the good things, and they'll promise they'll do this, and they'll do that, and they don't. And you know what, sometimes, especially when you're new in the business, you end up, thinking, they will do it, they will do it, they will do it, and you keep pushing them. Remember, you can push a horse to water, but you can't make a drink, okay? So have a look at who you're spending your time with, not sort of saying, you know, go to people in your team and start saying to I, I tend to say it as it is, okay, by the way, so I just be, believe that you've missed football to be here to learn how to build a business. Um, so I'll tell you my story, but I do believe that um, you've just got to be, you know, you've just got to make a decision what you want. Value everyone, but rely on no one but yourself, okay? Please, please make sure you do that. You value everybody in your business. Somebody who's doing £100 a month is valued in my business. Somebody doing £8,000 a month personal retail is valued in my business. So I will value everybody in my business, but I will rely on no one. Because at the end of the day, it's my life I want to build, it's my business I want to build, it's my income I want to build. I will help who needs to help. Lead me, follow me, or get out of my way. You know, these are little things that you hear all the time and, and, you know, you go to these meetings and you hear these little quotes, but some of them are, you know, you just got to take up, well, you know what, lead me, follow me, or for a while, just get out of my way, okay? Because this is a business that you can build and you can change your whole lifestyle around, okay? With this business, you can earn an absolute fortune, but you've got to get a bit uncomfortable. You've got to sort of sacrifice things um, and, more importantly, just believe one thing, you can do this. You can build this business. It doesn't matter how long you've been in, you can make that decision today. You can go home today, whether you've been in five years or five days, you could go home today and change your life in the next 12 months. It really can make a big difference. You heard um, Dave say over there earlier about um, find your why. Okay, just change that to find your emotional why. Because it's your emotional why that will make the difference. You know, we've all got the whys, we all want the big houses, we all want the big cars, we all want the nice things in life. Okay? But you try and find an emotional why, and all of a sudden, the things that are easy to do, which are easier not to do, you will do them. So try and find something that's touching you here. Okay? Because like I said, we've all got the whys, but try and find something that's actually an emotional why. It will make you do things. It's amazing. I've got a story which I will cover, um, and you'll see why it makes a big difference. But just, let me just cover a couple of quick things here with you first. Okay, so my story. No qualifications when we joined Clean Easy. I have, I've got one I live in and out. I have no qualifications whatsoever. So I have nothing to shout about. But I saw an opportunity where we turned this business down twice when we looked at this. So I was sat there where you are, turned the business down twice because I thought it sounded too good to be true. Okay? But for, for some reason, I don't know, I woke up on a Tuesday and I said to my ex-wife back then, I said, you know what? What if? What if this thing really does work and we're not doing it? If it doesn't work, you haven't lost anything. So what if it does work and we're not doing it? Okay? So, no qualifications. I had, if you have a look there, before Clean Easy I had two jobs. I worked for Bradford Council full-time, and I worked part-time in Asda filling shelves. I did that for seven years. Okay, for seven years I was working the 45-year plan, I was working the rat race. I had a full-time job, I had a part-time job, but do you know what? We were still skint. Okay, let me just tell you the hours, because when people say to you, I haven't got time, make the time. You've got to find the time. If you want things to change, you've got to change. 95% of the population are living in silent desperation. 95% live in silent desperation. So for things to change, you have to change. If you are in this room, you want something different. But if you carry on doing what you're doing, even in your business, if you carry on doing what you're doing, you will only have what you've got. 
So you've got to have a look at what it is you're doing. When I worked at Rafa Council, I worked Monday to Friday, 9 till 7, uh, yeah, 9 till 5, Monday to Friday, 9 till 5. I then worked in Asda, um, 8 o'clock Friday night till 8 o'clock, uh, no, 8 o'clock Friday night till 8 o'clock Saturday morning. I worked 8 o'clock Saturday night till 8 o'clock Sunday morning. I worked 6 o'clock Sunday night till 2 o'clock Monday morning, and then I went back to a 9 to 5 job. I did that for 7 years, not because I'm clever, but because I was skint. No one chooses to do silly things like that. But I had no choice because we had two kids, so I got the two kids. But we had two kids, had a mortgage to claim, had to put food on the table, things needed to happen. So I was doing that, so I was following the rat race, which most people out there are doing. They have no choice, they're sick and tired of being sick and tired, but they have no choice. We have an opportunity here where people are earning 20, 30,000 pound a month. Okay? I met a guy, um, Alan Moffat, um, big guy, nice guy, big guy, from Newcastle. He was on three grand a month when we joined this business. And I thought, what a difference that would make to my life. You know, if you can show somebody this opportunity that they can fit in the nooks and crannies of their life and they can earn an extra two, three, four hundred pounds a month, what a difference that's going to make for their lives. Okay, so we were sick, I was sick and tired of being sick and tired, but I had no choice. Okay, I didn't see the kids. Hardly ever saw the kids because of the hours that I was working. I thought I was doing okay. I thought, you know what, I'll do what I have to do. This isn't, no, this isn't the way to live your life. Okay, Juliet was working full time, so she worked in Bradford Council. She had a full time job as well. Okay? We had two kids, three jobs, and absolutely no money. It got to the stage when we didn't even have any money to buy my son a pair of shoes. That's how bad it got from. So when somebody shows an opportunity like this, you've got to grab it with both hands because it, you'll see in a minute how it can make a massive difference. We found, we, we found ourselves in the rat race, no money at the end of every month. Now I'm telling, you, I'm telling you now, there are people out there in the same situation or worse. 95% of the population are living in silent desperation. All we've got to do is find five good people. Not five talkers, just five good people. We all know people, we all talk to people. Take advantage of every opportunity when you're talking to somebody about this business. We don't know what you don't know, write this down. You don't know what you don't know. I met somebody the other day, you drive up to it, or the other week, you drove up to his house and it was a beautiful, massive house and you're sort of thinking, is this a joke? Does this guy really want to earn an extra income? You should have seen the car, you should have seen the house, it was awesome. But you don't know what you don't know. And what I teach my team is don't play God. Our job isn't to talk people into it. Our job is just to tell people about it and the good ones will join. The ones who want it enough will join. Chris Mason Paul once said to me, I'm, I'm, Chris Mason Paul once said to me, is what somebody said to me once, how, how do you get people to meetings? How do you get people to retail? You know, how do you get people to do things? And Chris Mason Paul at my first conference in Monte Carlo said to me when I asked him that same question, and he just said, just find people that want to go. That's it. So how do you get people to meetings? Find enough people, some will want to be here. How do you get people to retail? Find enough people, some of them will. And once I realized that, this became so easy. Because all I did was throw in the numbers, throw in the numbers, throw people into the business. Some will, some want, so what next? It's not rocket science, it really isn't. One well, no level in art, no qualifications. But just the determination that I, I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. I was skint. I couldn't afford my son a pair of shoes. You know what I'm saying, getting emotional why? That was a pretty emotional why when you can't afford your little boy a pair of shoes. Yeah? So think to yourself, when, when, when you think, oh, how do I get my team to do this? <coughs> Find more. Because the good ones will come. I've got people that retail four grand, five grand, six grand a month. I didn't sit down with these people and I didn't say, right, you need to do three grand a month retail, you need to bring four people in this month. I didn't do that. I just threw them in. And guess what? The retail's retail, the network is network. And the people that are wasting time are wasting their time, not mine. And the quitters will quit. Do you see what I'm trying to say? Yeah? So don't, don't, don't sort of blame yourself on why things aren't happening or don't sort of think to yourself, you know, you could leave this room today, you could be in this business, um, and think to yourself, oh, you know what, I've been in three years, I've been in four years, and I'm not where I want to be. But you could leave today with a completely different attitude and say, do you know what, things are going to change because I'm going to... There's nothing five new people can't change. Simple. There's nothing five new people cannot change. So if your business isn't where you want it to be, go find five more people. Out of that, you'll find one that may do something. Okay? 
Okay, everyone looks really worried. <laughs> <laughs> so, we join for an extra fifty pound a week to buy this one little pair, uh, some pairs of shoes. That's him showing his shoes off. <laughs> um, so yeah, we, we we joined just to buy some shoes. That's where we've come from. So we actually did join for fifty pound a week, um, and most people you find will join for an extra fifty, sixty pound a week. Especially at the moment, people are hurting out there. So most people will join for an extra fifty, sixty pound a week. That's what we join for. Okay, but once you get them into the business and you start promoting these meetings and getting into the meetings and things like that, they see the bigger picture. You see, what we teach is expose, involve, upgrade. And we do it in that order. I don't introduce somebody into the business who wants £50 a week and tell them about a 10 grand check. Because I'm going to blow that person away. So if somebody wants £50 a week, we'll introduce them, we'll show them how to earn that £50 a week. We will then advise them to come a meeting. We will tell them, because we're not going to play God, there's a meeting coming up on Tuesday. It's at this place. It will be great to see you there. My job isn't to ring him every day to make sure he turns on. If he wants it bad enough, guess what? They're going to be here. If they turn here, what's it telling me? Worth working with. Okay? They come to the meeting, so I've exposed them to Clean Easy. They come to the meeting, they have a look, they start seeing the bigger incomes that people are earning. And another quick thing is if you're in this business and you're, you're, you're bringing people to the meetings, use the meetings to build your business. There's a saying, work smart, not hard. You don't have to do much of the work in this business because there's so many tools out there that you should be using to do your job. I work full time, just so, you, just so you know, I still work full time, I have a full time job, my background's in recruitment, I did recruitment for seven years, I have a full time job, so I still build this business on a part time basis. And yet we've had over £60,000 worth of holidays, all expenses paid. Not because I'm clever, my income or my part time income with Clean Easy is more than my full time job. Not because I'm clever, but firstly because I didn't quit, like Dave said, and secondly I followed a simple system and I used the tools. Because you see, I don't have a lot of time. I have probably three hours a night in my business. I get three hours a day in my business to build my business. But I use that time productively. And that's when I'm saying, people can talk, but you can only judge them on their action. Now, if I've got three hours a day in my business, I've got to be careful where I'm spending my time. So if people aren't coming to the meetings that I promote, then I need to be careful where my time is spent because I'm limited on my time. Does it, does, is this making any sense? So all I'm trying to say is, you know what? I respect all of you, you've all come here today, you've all come to a meeting, you could be doing so many other things, right? But if you're going to be doing this, then you know what, from today onwards, let's work smart, let's start getting more people in, because if you throw more people in, somebody once said to me, oh, these meetings are getting boring, I'm just throwing stuff out there, but I'm just trying to, somebody once said to me, these meetings are getting boring, it's the same old, same old. You bring one new person to a meeting, the meeting is never the same. So if you bring a guest to every meeting, you will never get bored. Isn't that right, Sue? Yeah, absolutely. Isn't it? Because when you come to the meeting on your own all the time, you're seeing the same slides all the time and a different speaker. But if you start bringing people and guests to the meetings, all of a sudden, you're seeing it from their eyes. The meetings never become boring. So if you ever sit there and say, oh, these meetings are getting boring, then you need to look in the mirror. You're not bringing enough guests. Because I never get bored of meetings because we've always got guests coming to them. It's exciting. Yeah, this business is just about people. It's about people, 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 people. So if you're not bringing people and you're coming to the meetings on your own, it's brilliant that you're coming, but start bringing people. Because that's where your network's going to start to grow. Okay, so this was the, the thing and the thing. <laughs> this, was a, this, was, this was my son, who was, is, still is, my son who walked to the meeting. Um, so yeah, anyway, so this is why we joined the business. Okay? Our vision and our dreams started to grow when we attended meetings and realized what was really available. Guys, think of it this way, right? My brother has got a degree, my sister's got a PhD. Okay? When I joined Clean Easy, they laughed at me. My brother actually rang me from London and said, You want a five? I said, What for? He said, Save you got a little lunch. I own more than both of them before I wake up now. Okay? Not, again, not because I'm clever, but I came to meetings and I saw the potential. Remember what I said? Expose them into the business, involve them, and then upgrade them. You're involving people into the business by bringing them to the meetings. Because it's at the meetings that people start seeing the potential of what this thing's really about. You know what? There are people out there earning 10 grand a month. Like it or lump it, in Clean Easy, in the business that we've got, in the business that we've got our, whole, our hands in, there's only 12,000 Clean Easy distributors in the whole of Britain, Ireland, Holland and Germany. We're not even scraping the market yet. So if people can earn 10 grand a month, why can't we earn 5? That's my attitude. Now would 5 grand a month change your life? Would two grand a month change your life? 
It's just around the corner when you make a decision. Two grand a month is nothing. It's just around the corner when you make the decision. When your why turns into an emotional why. It's literally just around the corner. Especially at the moment when there's so many people hurting out there. There are so many people out there that are hurting that we can help, we can show them the business. Some will, some won't, so what next? Write it down because I'll tell you what, some will, some won't, so what next? Don't beat yourself up. Just keep finding them and keep finding them. There's another good quote, and these quotes keep coming in my head. There's another one that I've always believed in, is uh, replace them before you find out if they're good or not. That's something I learned because I used to bring people into the business. I'd bring two people in and I'd spend four months with the same two people. And then guess what? They didn't keep their promise and two quit. What happened to me? I'm back at the bottom starting all over again. My momentum's gone down. So somebody taught me, replace them before you find out if they're good or not. So when you bring somebody in and they say they're going to do this, they're going to do that, brilliant. But you know what? Replace them. If they do it, it's a bonus. If they don't, you're not focusing on that negative because you've got somebody else anyway. But you've already placed, replaced that one. We signed up for, last year we signed up 43 people in three months. That got me to Dubai because we were in, 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 in to get to Dubai for us, we had to be in the top, um, top 10 as a, as a gold exec, we had to be in the top 10. To qualify for Dubai, when, it, when they announced it, I was 67th. But I, started, I didn't even think I'd get to Dubai, and I didn't do it for Dubai, but I found another emotional why, which I'll tell you in a minute. But I didn't do it for Dubai. But we kept throwing them in, and I kept doing what, I, what I've been taught to do. When your upline or your sponsor tells you to do something, they're doing it for your best interest, because they're not making money unless you're making money. So if they say, John, you should be saying, how high? You've only got to build this business once. You don't have to build it ever, forever. You just build it once. And it will pay you forever. So we started, I started throwing people in, throwing them in, throwing them in. Some stayed, some went, some stayed, some went, some stayed, some went. And we went from 67th to the top 7th in, in, uh, to qualify for Dubai. Not because I'm clever, but because I kept on keeping on. I did what most people won't do so I could have what most people don't have. And that's on a part-time basis. We signed up 110 people last year on a part-time basis. We're at Gavin Scott, and it sounds like I'm bragging, but what I'm trying to say is if, bloody hell, if I, sorry, if I can, why can't anybody? There's nothing, I met Alan, he was on three grand a month, big fat guy from Newcastle, really nice guy, really nice guy, but he was on three grand a month. And I said to Juliet back then, if, he, if he's earning three grand a month, why are we selling for 50 quid a week? So we went for 500 quid a month. Then it was like, if we can earn 500, why can't we earn a grand? Two grand, three grand, four grand. If people are earning 20 grand, why can't we earn five? We've got the same catalog and the same population, haven't we? So we're just going to go out there and make it happen. Okay? So, bring people to the meetings because this is, I think, believe, I really believe this is where all business started to grow is at the meetings. Because when you're new, you don't know what to do. You don't know what to say to new people. So let the people at the front build your business. That's what we did. We just started throwing loads of people into the, to the meeting rooms and letting the meetings build the business while we were learning and earning. Understand the power of leverage. Some of you may have seen it, but I just want to quickly cover this with you. Uh, has anyone seen this, this, this power of leverage thing? No. <laughs> Let me just quickly explain this. I, I, I got to a stage, and a lot of people know Gavin Scott, um, and Alan Moffat, and Rob Foster, just ordinary people. And I was sort of thinking, you know what? How can these kind of people who have they're not academically qualified, are they? They, they tell you themselves they're shipyard joiners, aren't they? Shipyard workers. But yet they're earning 20, 30,000 pounds a month. How is it possible? How can people earn that kind of money? Surely you, you sort of think if they can, why can't I? What, you want to know. Right, this is what I saw. Okay, how many hours in a week? 168? Yes. That's 168 hours in a week. Just have a look at how simple this is. And this is why I can still do this part time and I still do. People say to me, why are you doing it part-time? I choose to. I'm greedy and I like my money. End of. Get over it. Okay? <laughs> but, watch this. If you can put in 10 hours a week into your business, just 10 hours. Now, anybody can do 10 hours a week. If, you, if you've got people in your team, or if you're not doing, don't be hands up. If you're not doing 10 hours a week for your business, how much do you really want this thing? Because you know what? Once you're earning five grand a month residual income, that doesn't disappear. But you've got to put the work in. Respect this business with the respect it deserves. 
yeah, football's on today. But you know what, if you said to the same people who want a thousand pound a month, we've got an offer, anyone who turns up at this meeting, they can go home with a thousand pound. All of a sudden, they would have recorded the football. They would have found a way to be here because they would have had a thousand pounds to take away. Their vision isn't big enough, they don't see it.